It's time once again for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture. Every week, we have industry guests, industry guests come on and talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is Mike Kafis. Hello. Jack Ballard. Good evening. And our guest host, hey man, you're muted. Our guest host this week is uh, John Walker. Hi. John is a buddy of ours that we, we've made recently. Uh, he is an author, an IT guy. It's an it guy, like like the Stephen Ooh. King novel. Watch out, he's scary. Uh, he's a philosopher. He's a Chippendale dancer, certainly. Green Lantern. Uh, and the inspiration for Walker, Texas Ranger. If you ask him, he will uh, prove it to you. He is the author of the Statford Chronicles, The Life and Times of the Private Detective of the Gods. In addition, he is deeply involved in the Baltimore Science Fiction slash Fantasy Writers Convention, or as we all know and love it, Balticon. John, welcome to the show. Well, it's great to be here. It's, uh, it's great to see you guys again. Um, I can barely remember Balticon now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Balticon was a great time this year. We had we had a real blast. Um, and that is a big thanks to you, John. You hooked us up big time. Got us uh, three live shows. I mean, we squeezed it in. It was a little late, uh, but but it was it was really good. And we had a good time. And I think, yeah. man, I think everybody had a good time. It was one of our best our best performances yet. Absolutely. It was it was great having you guys. I was really glad I was able to get you uh, all three nights. Um, um, and since I'm crazy enough to do it again this this coming year, I'll, I got you covered. Great. So were we. Yeah, yeah, so man, we. we're there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe we can get in at 9 o'clock this time would be good. I mean, I'm reserving early, so <laughs> <laughs> 9 o'clock so, would be prime. Um, fantastic, fantastic. So so let's talk about Balticon a little bit. Um, you know, and I'm not doing, this is not a recap show. We already did that. Uh, we're not going to talk about the, you know, like what we did at Balticon, but like what – what is Balticon? I mean, uh, you know, it, it obviously it's a convention and they have gaming and stuff like that, but it's not really a gaming con, right, John? I mean, what, what would you say? It's a writer's convention, but it's so much more. It's uh, podcasters like y'all. Um, it's filk. It's cosplay. It's dealers selling their wares. I mean, it's, ev it's everything that geeks and nerds could want. And it's all right up at right up in Baltimore. I mean, you, you cannot have more fun on Memorial Day weekend than being at Balticon. I, I've been going solid for the last. This will be my fifth year coming up, and I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. So, this Jack, is, this is your first time. I mean, what was your impression of? Uh, of, of the, I didn't the really know what to expect. It was my first the convention. It was my first con. It was my first time. It was it was a lot of firsts. Um, so when I went in there, I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't know if it was going to look like the cantina from Star Wars. I didn't know <laughs> if it was going to be like, I just didn't know. And I was delightfully surprised that it was very Star Wars cantina ish, but there was, um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of cool stuff going on. I wish I had more time. Like I kept, we would get there and, and we had to run around and do stuff. And I only got to look at a couple of things, but I, this year, this next year though, I'm walking off a whole day. I'm going to spend all day there and just look at everything. Cause that's what I wanted to do is just, but I was really impressed. I can't wait to go again. And I want to check out some other cons now too. I, I guess I'm booked. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I mean, you've got uh, awesome con down in DC. You've got uh Raven con down, which is down in Williamsburg. It used to be a, uh, uh, Richmond, but now it's down in Williamsburg, Virginia. So, I mean, right down the road, um, uh, just take take your pick, man. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of them. So uh, you know, I, I, one of the things I noticed about Balticons is there's a lot of writers uh, and a lot of indie writers um, and indie writers and slash like like this is where podcasting and writing kind of overlap a lot. Um, so what what the hell, man? What what is the big attraction? I mean, I, people fly. Scott Sigler sometimes flies in from from the West Coast. We got Paul Cooley comes in from um, from Texas. And Balticon's not like a big giant con. You know what I mean? Like it's not like a it's not like a Dragon Con or something like that. But there is a draw for it. And um, you know, I mean, it's fun and everything. But like, what draws? What do you think draws writers? All the I mean, like <laughs> to travel all that far. Because you know, writers are not exactly rolling in the dough, right, John? <laughs> Uh, no, no, I'm I'm rolling in the change, and that's stuff that's in the. <laughs> I 
<laughs> some pennies <laughs> stick so to you. Embarrassing that places. Would, the, would not be the first time. Uh, but <laughs> what we're looking at is, I mean, Balticon has a, it's a family. It really is a family. I think, And I think that's what brings everybody back to Balticon year after year. Just the camaraderie, the family, the sense of family, uh, and just the acceptance and all of the, uh, really it's a, the networking of, uh, a networking of writers, author, uh, writers, podcasters, uh, performers. I mean, you name it. I mean, I met, I mean, I've met, I've met Cooley, you know, he's, he's, a, he's absolutely one of the most fun people I've talked to at the con. I mean, at Balticon, uh, Dave Robson, I yeah. mean, the man is my mentor. He is to he is both to blame and to thank for me continuing to write. Uh, folks like uh, Gus Grappin and uh, Aaron Kazmark, who do the Melting Podcast, um, they're both fantastic authors, and they're both fantastic podcasters. So it's and but they're also all those people I just named are family to me. They're my family of choice, and that's what keeps me coming back. And I think that's what also keeps everybody else coming back. So, so do you guys, I mean, is there, is there like, uh, are there any other, you know, um, conventions for, for writers and such that, uh, at least for indie writers, that, that hit this mark? I mean, there's, I know there's like WorldCon or something like that, isn't there? Or And there's the science fiction fantasy uh, convention. Um, there's one that I forget what it is, but it travels all over the world. Um, but I mean, is there, yeah, I can't think of it. Is there um, anything else? to my knowledge, not really. I mean, Raven con, I mean, I'm actually, uh, I actually got invited to Raven con. It's my first time being invited to somewhere. I was like, <laughs> so, you know, pop my cherry on that. Right. And, um, <laughs> I've arrived. <laughs> I right. hit the medium time. And, uh, it was <laughs> really, it was, I mean, it, it was, you know, it's Ravencon is also very much, very much writer, writer oriented, uh, but it's also very much uh, cosplay and every and everything else. So that could be one. Um, as far as like on other coast, on the other coast or the middle of the country, I haven't had the uh, I haven't had the pleasure to go. Um, but I mean, I'll I'll be happy to look it up. I mean, that would be right. just freaking awesome to go start uh, traveling um you know see how the other half lives right right yeah. any other half hey mike you've been going to Balticon with me for a long time um what do you what do you think what do you think about the new digs versus the old digs did you i, I mean they have pros and cons right yeah i mean part of me you mean when it was up in hunt valley yeah 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 part of me misses that uh if for whatever reason it seems somehow more intimate uh, and easier to get to places because it was mainly on one floor or a second floor. But uh, obviously, and we talked about this before, so I don't want to belabor it. But uh, last year, compared to the year before, uh, it it warmed <laughs> my heart uh, and your being were, there. Yeah, yeah more yeah. more so because of you know how smooth it went. So I'm anticipating if next year is as smooth and it, they kind of work out more and more kinks. I'm anticipating we're going to kind of get that same feel and uh as long as i start to master the the exit and the stairwells because i you know we we do this we somehow find our way into a stairwell and then we're forced outside of the building to come around again and try and get yeah, back like, to the, <laughs> how did i get here it's like some weird escher like right. stairwell so right. other than i came that, up this stairwell from downstairs <laughs> but i can't go downstairs from upstairs because the stairs are what the yeah. f how am I on the no, street? I'm, I'm in a cave. It's like what? Right, right. I don't know, it works out for Jack though, man. Uber, you could Uber or or, or Lyft, you know. Great. It was ten minutes from my house and six dollars by Lyft, and I had the greatest drivers. One guy was drunk. Another guy <laughs> like asked me for directions there. Right. Another guy, like, he's like, "Where do I turn?" I'm like, "Turn left this way." Yeah. Do you drive? This is like the first time he's ever in the city or something. So wow. it was great. It was great. That's awesome. Super smooth. Yeah. So, I, hey, John, what's your what is the best Balticon? I mean, how, wait, first off, how long have you been going to Balticon? Uh, like a, uh, four years so far. This, like I said, this next one's going to be my fifth. Fifth. Okay. Wow. And and volunteering was your your last year was your first time volunteering? 
Last yes, that was my last. It, last year was my first year volunteering as a department head. Right. And, and how did that go? How did you? How's the experience? You're, you're doing it again. Yeah, I'm doing it again. Um, mainly because now I know now I know what to expect. Now I know what to do. Um, and I and Lisa, Lisa Sam, Lisa Moore. Uh, she's my deputy. She's probably one of the greatest people to be at my side for something like this. Um, and being able to uh, for last year, yeah, it was hectic. Yeah, I didn't get much sleep. But a lot, but a lot of it was just learning the ropes, and uh, I loved it. it. I mean, the high stress, the waking up early. <laughs> oh no! Mm-mm. Yeah, who doesn't no. love that? Yeah, I know, right? I was gonna say, woo! Can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah, I always seek that out in life. Right, right? waking up early, high stress, sign me up. All right, oh, I yeah. got, I, I got a question, John. So. Sir. Uh, you know, we hung out some at Balticon, um, but obviously you're busy and we're busy, yeah. so we don't have a, a whole lot of chance to hang out. So tell us uh, maybe one story from last year that, that maybe that stuck out that you remember, something that is uh, that might entertain us as far as, oh, you're never going to believe this, or maybe someone you met or something that happened, something fun. Okay, there was, um, there was the uh, dance. Uh, it's the uh, new media mm-hmm. dance. And apparently, I had been chosen as the uh, judge of honor, mm. or well, dishonor, really, <laughs> uh, for the uh, for the dance contest. And I have never seen dancing that bad ever. <laughs> I, I mean, the statute of limitations is not up on this, and I mm. mean. My brain cells just—they were strangling each other, trying to get away from it. <laughs> but I got to give absolutely a big shout out to uh, Lauren Harris, Lauren Scribe Harris, for uh, get start for getting that put together, and everybody else involved. Much love to them all. Yeah, dude. So I don't know if you've ever seen the the remember the old con suite, like you know the the <laughs> the Hunt Valley place. So. <sighs> They had uh, a DJ there one year. I think Alex White is that his name? Alex yeah. something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Alex, Alex, White. Alex White was DJing, and um, you know, so you know, there's nothing like you know playing like like really good dance music, and and you know, and and all the the geeks and nerds come out onto the floor and they start dancing. And like you said, you know, they're they're not your usual nightclub goers. And <laughs> <laughs> it's some of the- Generations, and I'm not trying to pick on that. I really, I'm, it's, it's funny. I'm not a good dancer either, so I mean, you know, take it for what it's worth. That's why I don't go out on the floor. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but, oh <my laughs> what was God. great was what was great was this dance contest was how badly they could dance, and it was just uh, I was just oh that, oh that the was contest like, was how bad they could dance. Yes, and they okay. did that, and, and oh. I, was just, I was just like, yeah, uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> right, right, oh, right Here. there, and I'm out. Right. All right. Oh man, it was it was funny. It was a good watch, and and uh, I'm I'm glad that they the, the oh, man, and I kind of miss I kind of miss the fact that um you know uh, Ken Ken Leahy would and and uh, Sam and me and Mike would sit down there and we would watch people like digging the bowls of food that were sitting out for hours and like eating sweaty meat and <laughs> just you know, if you like. Whatever you do, don't eat anything on that counter because don't don't, no, don't eat don't. any of that. Don't do it. <laughs> there there are there are there is not a double dip rule among no that con. No. 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 Bring your there's own. nothing there's nothing like people eating over the community bowl, you know? Mm. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, it's it's ridiculous. And that, I was gonna say that's the thing I miss because there's no like I didn't I don't think there was a con suite like that, and I couldn't sit there with Ken and, and Sam and laugh as as we uh, as we talked about some of the people who uh, don't have the etiquette of you know public food, uh, but it. <laughs> hey. Yes. Yeah. Hey, forget it, Jake. It's that that con. Look, here's yeah. the thing. Most people are good about it. I'm not, you know, most of the people there are, are perfect. You know, they do it right. They come up, they they take whatever they're going to take, they put it on their plate, and they go and they sit down and they eat. But it only takes, like, one person to ruin the whole thing for everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back in the band days, 
we played this bar and they had a free Mexican buffet at the bar, right? And it was already the most disgusting thing you've ever seen, but we were hungry. So I got a big plate of chips because I was like, how bad could you fuck up chips? And I sat down, put a little cheese on them, sat down. I pulled out the first chip and two cockroaches came out from the pile of chips. Oh! So like, nope. oh. All done. All done. No more. And even with cheese on them, the cockroaches tasted horrible. But oh. I, after that, I will not eat them anymore. <laughs> never and, again. And, and but now never... I'm always wary of free food. That's like, you know what I mean? Maybe it's just me, but you get what you pay for a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Thanks, guys. I, I've had enough internet for one day. Right. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even get to my double dipping cockroach joke. You know, you would never double dip a cockroach. That's yeah. gross. That's just wrong for everybody. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. If you're going to put, you know, I mean, you got the cheese dip, you put that roach in just once, not twice. Not after you've bitten <laughs> off of it, because that's disgusting. <laughs> they're, they're not as crisp the second time. You really got to go for the. All right. Yeah, they they kind of pop after that first hands. bite. <laughs> <laughs> right. John, it says that you're you're a mus- you you're into classic rock in your yes. bio, along with the other. We're gonna get to the Chip and Dale dancers. Trust me, I got some right. questions. Right. But, um, you I'm imagining you Chip and Dale's as one word is very confusing. Because I thought you were a Chip and Dale dancer. I thought you came out in the Chip and Dale Disney outfit and dancing no. in the chipmunk. It's an actual Chip and Dale. Only, only because I needed the money and I was young, drunk, and in love. Right. Yeah. <laughs> happens to all of us yeah well done. but what what uh classic rock uh bands are you into what's what's your music connection uh late 60s early 70s uh you know pretty much anybody from anybody from the woodstock era uh plus you know bowie queen yeah uh stones the who i'm a big yes freak i love yeah, yes that's great yeah um Good i miss chris squire one of the, one of the best bassists ever. I'll fight. I'll fight you for that one. That one I will fight for. Yeah. You play bass? No, no. I wish I did. I wish I did. Yes. Yeah, but so- yeah, that. I mean, that's that's you. I'm usually listening to, to uh, pretty much everybody I just named. Uh, whenever I need like a pick me up or something. Excuse me. Yeah, I have a dumb question. Who was Chris Squire the bassist of? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Who? No, not the who. Yes. Uh, 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 here we go. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so, <laughs> so, we, right, who was so we, so we, so uh, we, John, we, um, we were talking about you know I saw that you like classic rock, and I was a thought came to my mind you know because you're you're a fantasy sci fi writer. Um, and I, I thought we might want to touch on just a little bit because it, you know, I realize that there are a lot of bands from that era that that tapped into to fantasy uh, for their, you know, influence and stuff. Um, but I want I want to go back just a little bit because this one's going to lead into the next piece, which is, uh, you know, because because I was thinking, and it goes all the way back, like like Wagner, you know, with with the Ring Cycle, um, mm-hmm. and it jacked. What was it you were saying about about Wagner and the Ring Cycle and? Uh, oh, he was yeah. Wagner was basically like the first heavy metal uh, composer. He added a whole different section, a whole bass cello section, and and lowered them and and wrote in in minor keys, which was kind of a no no. And, and so he, I, I love Wagner; he's great. But uh, but yeah, it, we, we were talking mainly about how the inspiration is kind of a two way street between music and 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 literature, and and you know Led Zeppelin being probably the most famous with the with the mentions of Lord of the Rings. Do oh, you yeah. often use that as as a uh, as a template or, or for some in, for me uh, inspiration? Yes, uh, I mean I absolutely do. Um, Queen has, is one of my favorites, uh, as I said, um, and when I need to. I'll use uh, stuff from uh, the um, either like a kind of magic, which was essentially the Highlander soundtrack, and and I'll just <laughs> uh, and just work that into work some of the some of the images into it. Uh, I'll also, but also um, some of some of the uh, I mean, uh, absolutely Led Zeppelin. I'll I'll throw that in. Uh, Pink Floyd, both before and after Sid. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. thought you were going to catch me that one. Um, but I do a lot of, but I, 
will absolutely just uh, take a song and put it on loop and put it on repeat and just keep listening to it while I'm working on a chapter and just and just hit it. It, it and eventually I'll get in that uh, I'll get in that rhythm where I'm just hitting the hitting the care hitting the keys to the tune of the music, which is very weird now that I think of it. But no, no, dude. Well, what songs that. have you used? What what yeah. songs do, have you used to uh to to create this? This is awesome. Um, let let's see. Like I guess pretty much anything on anything from uh, kind of magic, news of the world, um, the division bell, uh, oh. the wall. Oh God, the wall. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, houses the holy. I mean, just I'll and I'll. Um, Zo uh, oh God, what was it? Zozo, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, Led Zeppelin two, physical graffiti. I mean. Yeah. Just, what uh hendrix uh, i mean i'll throw some i'll throw some jimmy in there just just to give it some fun but, yeah. but do they do they color the tone of your writing i mean like are you are you when you're writing um is there is there anything in the music that uh that is that is playing that is really like coloring um you know the feel of what you're what you're writing like are you if you're writing a scene does uh do you ever get to the point where you just like you write it a little more a certain way because you're listening to a soundtrack oh, yeah. at that time or something Oh yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, um, oh god, I'm trying to remember one in particular. Uh, books, book eight opens with a. Uh, t I mean, I had a tune. I had a new scene that I wanted, and it was, it was, a, it's not a classic. T well, technically, it's not a classic tune. It was Faith No More, and uh, Falling to Pieces. It's I, I love that tune, and I kept playing it through my uh, I was playing on my headphones and I'm like okay I need to see how this scene goes and it just it clicked right when I had this critter start quoting it and I was like yes that was it <laughs> ha, suck it suck right. it ha. Right. Faith No More is my all time favorite band I, I couldn't have been more ecstatic to hear you say that word. I just saw Mike Patton's new band last night, the singer from Faith No More. Last night in Philly, I just saw him. I was 10 feet away from him. Oh, All-time favorite band is Faith No More. That can couldn't have been a better better. Can he still will? Oh, yeah. He, oh. The guy can scream and sing and go back. It's just amazing. He's just an amazing oh. vocalist. Have you Jack, ever heard of Mr. Bungle? Oh, sorry. I got, I got a dumb question. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got a dumb question. I got a dumb question. So I, I, I know who Faith No More is, but I'm a dummy. I'm a big dummy with Faith No More. I know uh -huh. they had the, I know they had the singer that, of the song everybody knows. You know, you have it, right. or want it all. But, right, right. So I know, uh -huh. I know that's not the original singer, right? He replaced somebody, didn't he? Yes, he replaced Chuck Mosley uh, okay. in the early, early '90s. Like it might have even been late '80s. Um, they only put out one album with that one singer, and that singer went on to be in a band called Bad Brains. Um, oh, so I like Chuck that Mos band. <laughs> yeah, so yes. Chuck Mosley was the original singer, and their original guitar player was Courtney Love before heroin, believe what? it or not. And uh, and yes, and so they put out, uh, and they are known. They're kind of like Radiohead in that they're known for a song that they don't even sound like anymore. Right. Um, so they, you know, so they're they're a fantastic band. There's uh, Mike Patton does another band called Mr. Bungle, which I can all. It's like Frank Zappa doing. Uh, uh, clown music like I don't really know how to describe it if you can imagine Frank Zappa on acid with a bunch of clowns that's pretty much what Mr. Bungle sounds like and I couldn't recommend that those albums enough either they're in, amazing oh well, sounds okay. legit yeah, yeah. okay so that's that's the guy so the guy you're talking about uh, the guy that went to form Mr. Bungle or was is in Mr. Bungle that's that's the guy we know from the music video that everybody would know right yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. okay yep. all right okay okay exactly yep um, yeah, and you I want to talk got... about a great bass player. Yeah. Hey, Faith did, No More got the best did, one. Did Faith No More, was their first album, was that the one that had the song Harley David, Son of a Bitch on it? Was that them? Or was that somebody no. else? That's someone else. I've never heard that song before. Shit, what song did they do? What was what was the big, their, their, their big. Epic. 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 Yeah. Um, the one before that, I mean, on their first album. Do you remember? Do you know what that was? Uh, we Care A Lot was kind we of. We Care A Lot. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's the other song. Right, right. They played yeah. that in all the like p progressive like dance clubs and shit all the time. Yeah. Right, uh -huh. right. We Care yeah. A Lot that's, About that's, You yeah. People. Right. Yeah. That's a good yeah. song. I like that one. 
But that's yeah. that's a whole different sound, right? That's completely different than anything they're doing. It's not completely different, but it's old, like us. Okay, like us, crusty, <laughs> crust, crusty like me. <laughs> oh, fantastic! I resemble that remark. Right, yes. right, right. Don't we all? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, so yeah. So it, I I thought it was kind of interesting because, like, you know, you know, Wagner, uh, he's influenced by the Ring Cycle, and then you know, uh, Tolkien's influenced by. Wagner, and then Led Zeppelin is influenced by Tolkien, and then you know uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Gary Gygax is influenced by probably by all of them. Um, oh man! But, but, well, but yeah, yeah I, dude, music does. Music is absolutely integral, at least in my not so humble opinion, of just about any piece of literature out there. I mean, if you listen to any audiobooks uh, it, that are, you know, that are worth anything. They'll have a soundtrack. They'll use. They'll usually use like stuff in the you know open source stuff in the background, but you'll have the music. You'll have the sound effects, and they punctuate. Just they punctuate the words just as well as the right. The right sound makes can make the choice of words perfect, and right. vice versa. And I think yeah. I think Libby Libby probably listens to like. Um, our friend Jay Libby, he probably listens to like the worst music ever, right? <laughs> and he's oh, always God. like bragging about like, yeah, I was cranking some, I was cranking some Barbie Girl today while I was writing some eighties like, <laughs> ministry, right, right, oh, or eighties, like, or eighties ministry, right? Like he'd be like, yeah, oh, man, no, I was really no, digging no, on some no, ministry no, today. No, yeah, no, which one? No. The Halloween album, man. Right? Like, oh, oh God, the not worst one of that song. <laughs> Every day is Halloween. Right. Is Halloween. right. No. My people are taunted. Right. <laughs> so, and it then, and then Jack. Some therapy to get rid of that. Yeah. Now you brought it back. Thanks, guys. <laughs> right. uh, and Jack, you were. You I'm were doing about, therapy. It's kind of our specialty. You were talking about Mastodon doing like Moby Dick. I never heard yeah. of that. Okay. I never heard of Mastodon. Third album. Is is called Leviathan, and it's uh, taken. It's it's a direct, almost playthrough of Moby Dick, and it's entirely themed. All the songs, and it follows the pacing of the novel, and it's really, really fascinating. And of course, there's other songs and stuff like that that have been inspired by stuff. But they did an entire album that's basically based on Moby Dick, and it's it's fucking awesome too. Um, there's another band that's called Sixteen, spelled out, not just one six. Mm-hmm. And they did, and this is in the uh, late 90s, they did an album that matches up, kind of like Pink Floyd and uh, Wizard of Oz. Right. They did an album that matches up completely in sync with Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, and sweet. it is it is awesome. And the boob scene is great. Like, they have a great song for that. Like, it's it matches. You can play, They recommend you start the movie and start the CD, and it matches Fast Time at Ridgemont High all the way through. And it's great. It's like their own soundtrack. Like, they, they recorded yeah. their, own, their soundtrack own soundtrack for the movie. Yes. And the lyrics in the songs are matching what people are saying sometimes. So oh, it shoots up so perfectly. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's really incredible. Oh, and it's sweet. a good album, too. Mm-hmm. God. I, I can think of some things you might want to eat before watching that, and it would be yeah. awesome. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Pizza. Yeah. Potato chips. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so so John, we, we had you come sure. on because uh, you have you are a writer, sir, and you have written some – oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, real quick. Before we do that, uh, 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 chat the, the in the chat, uh, someone asked – because I don't know this, and maybe Jack, maybe you would know this um, music oh, okay. guy. Okay, yeah, I'm glad you said that. Or, or, or Mike, Mike, you know this one? No. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I'm saying I'm glad you're you're caught that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, is isn't the ring Baldrin. cycle the Goldrin? Yes. Isn't the ring cycle like 16 hours long? Yeah, it's super long. Yes. What was the purpose of that? Was that just like a, a, a something he tried to do? Uh, was that like a I don't know. It was going to be, I guess, what you would call a 17th century miniseries. It was going to take place over three or four months, and the story was going to unfold, but it never really worked out that way, and I don't think he ever finished it either. Um, Mm. But, yeah, it's supposed to be crazy long, and it's supposed to be played in parts, and he designed it so it was going to be in three major parts, and then people could reproduce the parts and watch them on their own. So it's kind of like 100 years from now, 300 years from now, they're like, 
who watched 17 seasons of this show? You know, I and mean? well, it was divided right. up. And, you know what I mean? So, yeah, because yeah. yeah. because it was an opera. I mean, it's a play. It's not just music. It's there's a whole theatrical portion yeah. to this. It's it's like a TV. Mm-hmm. It's like ancient. It's like what? Uh, uh, 18th century. Wait, 19th century? 19th century, right? Uh, mm-hmm. It'd be like yeah. 19th century TV. All right. So anyway, so so John, sorry, sorry. You are a writer, sir. Um, and you yes. have a series oh, called the called the Statford Chronicles that you wanted to talk about. So what what is yeah. the Statford Chronicles? Oh, uh, it's a it's the story of a it's a saga. Real it's a saga at this point of a private detective of the gods. Uh, he is just this just this dude who got picked to be. A, uh, who got picked to be a, the mortal go-between of the gods and the rest of the world. And, and, and he hates it. <laughs> he absolutely hates being this because he, they call him the Keeper um, right. because apparently, you know, Whipping Boy of the Universe would, just, would not fit on the business card. So he uh, he's a private detective. He works uh, in in the uh, Hampton Roads area of Virginia. Oddly enough, that's where I live. Oddly enough. Yes. I know. Right what you, <laughs> right what you know, baby. Um, it's, but it's a, he, I, I, this started off as kind of a lark and because uh, I did the first, the first book and was like, you know, let me see how, how the story flows. And uh, it really works now. I mean, it, I'm nine books in. I'm working on the 10th one, which will be out by April, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> yeah, and it's but it's very exciting. It's and it's a uh, it's probably the biggest thing I've ever writ- worked on at bar none. I've I've never worked on anything this detailed, and there's there's a mythos springing up around it okay. by itself. Yeah, because you uh, you started out with because uh, you started out from what I was reading. So, uh, I haven't read like through your books and everything, but I was doing some research on you and I noticed that, um, uh, the, the first book is what it's like, uh, a hundred, a hundred pages was it? And then I think they got bigger, right. As, as you, as you started writing more and more. It got, I, it got, a, it, it was like a buck 20 or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but the first book we had, it, it started off, like I said, it was just, world it, it was just a lark it was something i i, I mean i wasn't expecting it let's put it that right. way I, um i actually fit, wrote the first chapter in my head but while uh, mowing the lawn <laughs> right <laughs> that gives you an idea and uh and by the time i wrote the first chapter i sent it off and next thing you know old jed's a millionaire and i've got a book <laughs> you're a millionaire no, no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then, uh, and then, so you got what? What do you, you said? You're going come up on your tenth book, right? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Wow. Fantastic. So, what's uh, what's the ten, one that's out right now? The one that's out right now is uh, called the the Twain Shall Meet. Um, it's the see. I, there's I, I've got this plotted out to uh, twenty one books. Wow. Holy crap! And it's uh, yeah, it's uh. Three cycles of seven. Um, I call them cycles just because it sounds cool. And uh, it, uh, and each one is kind of a uh, – it go, it follows the Star Wars method. You know, you got mm. New Hope, Empire, Jedi without the Ewoks. And it the way I have it is right now we're in the uh, Empire stage. So it's uh, definitely going to be um, – I, I, I do. I actually have the ending, essentially written in stone. So, oh. so once you I know how you're going to end the whole thing. Yep. Okay. Yep. And there are f- exactly four people who know who know the whole t- who know the whole thing. Right. In the entire world, it's, which and I'm I'm one of them. So well, I hope so. It's going to definitely. Yeah, well, <laughs> but it's it's definitely. Uh, it's definitely like I say. It's it's daunting. It's very daunting. It's very. It's kind of scary, the way this has to come to life. But it's right. really just amazing. Oh, cool! All right, so. fantastic. Um, now I noticed. Hey, hey, Mike. 
Yes, they sir. Had, uh, I noticed a name as an illustrator on on John's books. Uh, someone named Starla Hutch 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 Hutchton. <laughs> uh huh. And we might have had her on our show before, back in uh, season we one. Did. We had we had we had Starla. Hutchton on our Hutchton. show. Hutchton, yes, yeah, I know. I kept, I kept, I kept fucking her last name up. That's why I did. I mean, I could say it now, Starla Hutchton. But yes. I was like, Hush, t- Hush, I, you know, I was like, right? Hutchinson, Hutchinson, right? Ten, ten, son, right? What's up, John Travolta? <laughs> right. Uh, it was a good show. It was a- episode uh, season one, episode twenty three. If you want to find out about Starla, go watch that. I, I just happened to write it down because I saw that. I, I happened to notice. I was like, holy shit, Starla. So does, so does she do all your book covers? Yes, she does, and hopefully she'll do all of them. Um, she is a God. I, I I mean I love and I both love and hate how talented she is because I look at that I'm like I have to make sure the words I write are worth these awesome covers. Right. And um, I mean she she actually had ever, I think she's I think I've only had to send a cover back once, and that was to change one thing. Mm-hmm. And but every time she does a cover, it's like she's right in here and it's out. So right. it's me. Just she, I. She's one of the two people I could not do this without. Right. She's she does good work, good artwork. I'll she's say that. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah. So so did you meet? I mean, so when you started when you started doing your novel series, when you started writing, about how long ago was that? Was that when you first started going to Balticon, or did you know some of these people before then, or how did you get? Like for example, how did you hook up with uh, having Starla Hutchinson do the covers for your books? I know probably one of the greatest voice actors ever. What? Might have, yeah, better than you, Mike. Uh, oh, that's entirely possible. Veronica Jaguer. Oh yeah, yeah. I've known I've known Veronica for probably going on a dozen years at least. Uh, we we were on we played City of Heroes together um, back back when that was out, and we we've, we've written together. And when I finished um, when I finished uh, Flattery, I I said, "Hey V, what do I do?" <laughs> she said, "You need a cover." I said. Who do I get a cover from? She said, "Meet this nice lady." I went, "Okay," and right. It's just been it's just been magic from there. Okay, you know, talk about talk about networking. So, um, so I met Dave Robeson this year. It was the first time I met. I've seen him around the con a lot, and it's actually the first time I think that I've actually met Veronica was this year. Um, and again, another person I'd seen, seen her on panels, seen her around. Um, so for work, we had a project where we needed, uh, we needed voice actors for it. And, and one of the guys, uh, I didn't know, I wasn't working on the project. One of the guys came to me and says, you know, people like voice actors and stuff, don't you? I was like, yeah, I know a few. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so he came to me and he, and, and he says, he said, can, can you like, can you see if they could do some work for us? We have some videos. We need some voiceovers or, well, it's actually a, it was a VR, it was a virtual reality thing that they're doing at work. Um, so they wanted to have some, some voiceover. It's a training asset. Um, so I contacted, I contacted Dave Robeson, uh, and a couple other people and we got some samples and I let, you know, cause I wasn't the project manager, so I couldn't just pick. So I got a couple samples and then they had some that they, that a couple people that they'd used before, but they weren't really happy with them and they compared them and they wound up hiring Dave and, and uh, Veronica to do, uh, That's awesome. to, to do the voiceovers there for it. Go. So it was, it was kind of cool. You know, the guys was like, yeah, I get to share the wealth. Um, you know. <laughs> And so anyway, yeah, so it was a good time. Um, oh, yeah. All right. So they're, they're uh, fantastic people. So, so John, uh, before we wrap up this interview, uh, I, I asked you ahead of time if you had a little bit that you wanted to read for us, a couple paragraphs. Did you uh, do you have that? I can just give me a second to find it All right. before I. That's fine. So I so I asked I asked John to find a paragraph or two, a couple paragraphs that that exemplify his work, so that people could get an idea of, of his writing style. And if they wanted to uh, get into the stat for Chronicles, this would be uh, a good way for them to get a tiny little intro into it. Yeah, I actually did a uh, I did a uh, reading at a local comic book store, and uh, it it turned out really well. I had I didn't have much of a physical 
presence there, but I had a lot of uh, just everybody was on uh, was doing Facebook Live, and I was streaming it out and got plenty of uh, plenty of great feedback there. Okay. So let me see. Oh, and and Godrin, he uh, he wants to know who the other three are, so he can torture him for spoilers. I guess it's a he. I don't know. It could be her. I don't know. It sounds like a male centric name, but maybe not. Uh, uh, pay me, uh, buy my books and you'll find out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Good, that's a fantastic answer. I am not, pay I, me. I am not above bribery. Okay. No. Okay. Um, let's see. So just, uh, okay. <clears throat> Someone once told me there was a time and a place for everything. There were no accidents and no such thing as coincidence. More importantly, I was informed there was no such thing as luck. Life, good or bad, just happened. Just like my face just happened to be in the way of a gloved fist. I managed to move my head a bit to the left to mitigate the damage, but the hit still rung my bell. The fist just happened to strike my cheekbone, opening the cut that closed only a few hours prior. Warm blood trickled down my right cheek, reaching my jaw and dripping onto my lap. Blinking hard to get my bearings, I tested the plastic zip ties for the eighth time. They kept me secured to the chair quite easily. A quick glance around my immediate surroundings was pointless. I couldn't see much of the darkness surrounding me anyway. The lights focused on me nearly blinded me as if I looked to either side. Why they brought me where they did made sense when I thought about it. The problem was time was not on my side, and neither was luck. That's awesome. Uh, uh, I can I can do just one more, which probably let me sure. do. I like that I face and gloved fist. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you hold him? That was one of the assholes who decided my face and bone structure needed rearranging. His turned up nose and wrinkled face reminded me of a pl- of a pug, and I nearly laughed at the thought. I probably would have laughed as his partner grabbed my hair and held my head straight. Another fist the size of a bus. Traveling at roughly half the speed of light impacted my forehead, making my bre- bur- making birds start to chirp like it was a cartoon. The force of the blow knocked my head from Pug's partner's grip, and I said the only thing I could. Ow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Awesome. Uh, that's that's actually that is actually from uh, Luck Be a Lady, which is com- which is coming out next year. So. Cool. Awesome. Okay. All right, fantastic. All right, well, hey, everybody, we're gonna stick around because we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna play a game. Mike has got a game to play with John. Uh, oh, Galdrin us- says he already owns them all too. Yeah, Galdrin. Yeah, apparently you have a fan in the chat room. Um, so make sure. So spill the beans. Come on, real quick. Spill the beans. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I already bought all of them. <laughs> It's as just us. Who, as soon as I find out who it is, you know, hey, we'll, it, it's we'll know it's about. just us, you know. Nobody. All right, anyway, uh, so check out uh, Walker. All right, so Walker's Edge Publishing dot net. W a l k e r s e d g e p u b l i s h i n g dot net. Uh, you can also find John's stuff on uh, Facebook dot com. Uh, forward slash the stat s t a t Ford f o r d chronicles, and you can follow John at Walker eight seven five. And John, are you're on Goodreads, right? Maybe, Maybe. I think so. All right, fantastic. <laughs> now, I did find your stuff on Amazon, um, and Yay, yeah, Amazon. so you, you know, if you go to Amazon, you can find John's stuff and download. No audio books though. What's up with the audio books? Ah, that's something I'm working on. I am working to resolve that deficiency, and um, I'm actually going to be reading them myself. Right. I was going to say, you know know a few podcasters (laughs) who could help you with the setup and and the the whole thing on how to do all that. There's some resources to tap into for all that. Which I I have. I actually am having – what I'm doing is I'm having – I'm I'm doing the reading – and I'm going to have an absolutely wonderful, wonderful lady named Laura Nicole Spencer, who's going to do the produ- the uh, editing and production for me. So hey, we, we know awesome. Laura. She's a good buddy Laura, of ours. Yeah, Laura yeah. Nicole is a very good friend of the show. Yeah, right? 
And she does she does good edit work. She's she's fantastic, and she's uh, you can't beat her for her prices. Her prices are uh, quite frankly cheaper than her quality. So that's a fantastic. Good. All right. Uh, I'm gonna I think that wrap. was a compliment. I'm not no, sure. it was. No, 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 no. I'm saying that one back again. Okay, let, let me. We had that awkward that silence right at the end. Let, let me say it again. Yeah, that was. I was trying to figure out what that meant. <laughs> her her prices for her work are is cheaper than her quality. So in other words, her quality is better. You're getting better quality than you're paying for. You're getting a good deal. She does good work. It was a compliment. There you go. There you go. There we go. Let's we just love go you, Laura. We that. love you, Laura. <laughs> much, right. much better. You're welcome, Laura, because we weren't going to stand for that. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. no way to let Pete get away with insulting another guest's work. No another way. Another one. <laughs> I was just going to hand him a shovel, and we could just, you know, just sit and watch it. Wait. Watch me. I'm digging. <laughs> Dig up, stupid. <laughs> All, right. All right. Like I said, everybody hang around. I'm going to run the closer. And then uh, we're going to play a game with Mike. Uh, we'll, we'll The show will just ping back up again. So... Ah, uh, yes. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits Podcast. Uh, or video cast, depending on what you're watching. Catch us live on Twitch Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Jump into the chat room like some of our people did tonight. Uh, you can ask us yeah. questions, and we will ask them to the guests. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes at YouTube forward slash Mythwits. Find us at Mythwits.com and on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Podbean as Mythwits. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Please give us a bunch of stars and a review on iTunes. Make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread the Mythwits over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. If you like us, you're bound to like the other great shows there as well. Check out TSRPN.com. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Make sure to check out Studio187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. It's cool. You just push the button, fill out the thing. It's like two lines. Take you two seconds. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike! Gaudron, welcome to our dysfunctional family. <laughs>